We live in a world of war, gang violence, bullying, racial discrimination. But at the same time, we also live in a world of family bonding, charity, shelters and soup kitchens for the homeless, agencies like Make-A-Wish Foundation. And so I brought this duality for discussion today while I ran philosophy group. And we discussed it. And I think that one thing that we can take away is that people might get caught up in these ideas of good and evil and they might ask why is there evil in this world why is there why can't we do more good but we need to look backwards a little bit more we need to ask where did this come from it's not simply boom humans were dropped here and now we have to decide one or the other no these these are emotions and emotional patterns that we've been inherited through years and years of evolution. I think it's fair to say that our ancestors were fairly good at at least two things. One is defending against attacks, competing when their lives were on the line, being ruthless, surviving right under threat, but then also developing bonds with family members, friends, especially close genetic relatives, like family, but, but friends as well, other tribe members. And so there's this dual nature in a way. I mean, if you look at nature videos, you can see like a lioness go on attack and, you know, kill a gazelle, like in the neck, like ferociously, like with almost like with zero empathy. And then, two minutes later, go back to her lion cubs and lick them and care for them and, and show them love, I guess you could say. So, so you can see in the animal kingdom there's this dynamic also. So then, that leads to an interesting question, which is, since the brain is so involved in behavior, is there something different going on in the brain when we're competing versus cooperating? I did a little Google search and I found that in 2008 there was a study done at University College London by someone named Samir Zeki. And he had these participants gather pictures of people they hate. He brought these participants into the lab, showed them the pictures of the people they hate while the participants were hooked up to brain scanning uh, machinery. And what did they find? Well, they found that there was more activity in the frontal lobe in parts that are involved with planning, predicting, and evaluating, like judgment, evaluation. So let's think about that. The predicting part could be maybe, you know, you need to predict your enemy's moves or you need to predict how your prey, what your prey is going to do. It's a speculation. But the, the evaluative part was interesting to me. Why would our evaluative judgment capacities be lighting up? And that, <clears throat> that made me think of the word discriminate which has two meanings. One is discerning, right? A is not B, B is not C, right? This color, this shade of red is a little bit different from this shade of red, right? It's a, we're discriminating, right? But also we use the same word when we talk about like racial discrimination discriminating against people, right? Which brings in this whole concept of hatred, hatred, competition. Um, and not to say that those are synonymous, I'm just 
I know I'm oversimplifying here, but I'm trying I'm trying to, to draw some insights. It also reminded me of a video I made a few months back where I talked about this idea of judgment creating distance. And what I meant by that was that let's say you walk outside and the sun is shining, it's warm, there's a nice breeze and you just get this sensation that this is a beautiful day. And then what happens is you turn to the person next to you and you say, wow, this day is so good. The weather is so good. Now you just made an evaluation of the day. First you were experiencing it, but now you're evaluating it. And when you evaluate, it creates distance. So you just distanced yourself from the experience. You are no longer, your attention is no longer in the sensations. It is now in the process of discriminating. Discriminating this day against other days that you have experienced in the past. And you are going to say, over the last year, the last 365 days, this day is the best, right? So now you're, so now you're discriminating. And so we got to ask if this is what's going on in our mind, are there times when our circumstances bring about this, this specific tendency? Let's take a look at rush hour traffic. What happens in rush hour traffic, I think, is people's vibrations have a uh, tendency to divert towards ruthless competition, right? And why is this? It's because of scarcity. There's a scarcity of road space. And so people might be less likely to let others in, or if they do, they really don't want to. <laughs> um, but the point is scarcity right look at what causes a lot of wars on this planet we fight wars over resources like oil because it's scarce right gangs fight over territory which is scarce and interestingly when i worked in chicago uh, with the uh, the kids who had conduct or disorder which means they engaged in behaviors that appeared to have no empathy, like cruelty to animals. Those children often, or at least it wasn't uncommon for them to have come from an upbringing of neglect where there wasn't enough resources. So it's not definitive proof, but it's, it's definitely evidence suggesting that maybe there's this link between scarcity and competition. I'm reminded of uh, this time I was in Costa Rica and the family that I was staying with, the grandmother said, uh, I don't know why all these guys, these soccer players keep fighting over the soccer ball. They should just give a soccer ball to every player so that they don't fight anymore. <laughs> but um, if you think about it, team sports are a perfect example of the dual human nature in action, right? Because you have, on the one hand, a team that's banded together, cooperating, passing to each other, while at the same time keeping the ball away from the other team, encroaching on their territory, and then scoring on the other team, right? And that's why you see so much like between like inter-team conflict. Like you see, like in hockey, people fight on opposite teams, right? And then what happens is guys on each team come to the defense of the fighting players on their respective team. So here's so here we have human nature in action. But I think the point is that 
I want to ask what brings about these different mindsets, scarce or uh, competitive versus cooperative mindsets. Is it a distinction worth making and worth being aware of? And if scarcity brings about the competitive mindset, then what brings about the cooperative mindset? So that's the question that I'll leave us with for now. Next Saturday, January 13th, I'll be doing a, uh, the second emotional boot camp. It's basically a uh, personal development workshop, a one hour um, sort of a lecture, but it's, it's pretty interactive. I'll ask questions uh, open-ended to have people think about them as I talk. And it's very, very powerful. The, during the first one, my audience started taking notes partway through because the information was so solid. And this information comes from hours and hours of reading, study, and through seminars that I attend and pay for myself. So the Emotional Boot Camp will be $20 in person. The recording will be available on my website afterwards. So if you're interested, just go visit existencefirst.com. And uh, if you want to come in person, you can uh, also visit the website or message me through Instagram, Robert Exists on Instagram. And uh, yeah, I hope, you t hope to uh, see you there. It will be very powerful. So uh, until then, just remember to uh, put your existence first.